So a lot of people understand that the cross-plane engine Yamaha produced from 2009 to their current bikes has a very unique power curve. Uh, it doesn't really have a lot of bottom end. Uh, it has a lot of mid-range power and it has really good top end power too. The cross-plane crank design is pretty common in the automotive world, uh, V8 engines in particular. That's why a lot of people think these bikes kind of sound like a uh, more muscly, like a V8 would be. They have a really low end, uh, kind of grunty, deep noise to them. But a lot of people don't understand what causes that. Everybody knows these have a unique firing order, but even myself, I didn't understand how different the firing order was until I looked into it more. So let's go over to the bench and I made a little illustration to try and demonstrate and explain just why these bikes don't really have a lot of bottom end and why they have really good mid power, unlike a traditional flat plane. So let's start with the flat plane. Flat planes have been around forever and you see them in almost all the crotch rocket style bikes. These are the cylinder numbers. This is your traditional firing order. One, two, four, three, in that order. So cylinders one and four are synced together and two and three are synced together. They move up the bore at the exact same time. They just fire on opposite uh, crank rotations. So let's break this down a little farther. You're on top dead center, cylinder number one. Now cylinder number four is at top dead center as well, but that's not the hole that's firing. Cylinder number one is on its power stroke. Your crankshaft rotates 180 degrees. Now cylinder two is at top dead center. Cylinder number two ignites, power stroke 180 degrees, then cylinder four 180 degrees, cylinder number three 180 degrees, and you're back to top dead center on cylinder number one on your power stroke. So as you can see, this would be a very smooth running engine. It's very balanced. Uh, one and four being synced together, two and three being synced together. Um, everything's just very balanced. It's timed very well. It's a very smooth and simple design. So this gives you very good idle quality and it gives you linear power through your entire rev range. Now let's move over to the cross plane and you can see things are drastically different on this side. So the firing order is different right off the bat. One, three, two, four. Uh, no cylinders are synced together like one and four and two and three on the flat plane bikes meaning that each cylinder will be at top dead center at a different time. But what I didn't understand for the longest time is the crank rotation between firing events. It's very different. So cylinder one's on top dead center, your power stroke, your crank actually rotates 270 degrees before cylinder three is at top dead center. And that is massive. After cylinder three fires, you have a normal 180 degree crank rotation to get number two on top dead center. So that would be similar to your flat plane crank design. And then this is where it gets interesting as well. So cylinder two fires and you only have 90 degrees crank rotation until number four hits. So you more or less have a double power pulse. Cylinders two and four fire very close together. That's kind of why these bikes have the nickname uh, Big Bang. And then after your double power pulse there, you're a normal 180 degrees to get cylinder one back on top dead center. So this unique firing order and the distance between your actual firing events is what gives the cross plane that very unique burble and that muscly kind of lope sound. So now that you can see the distance between firing on cylinder one and cylinder three, 270 degrees, that's a lot of time between firing events. I think that's the main reason why these bikes are a little bit harder to start, especially when they're cold or cold ambient temps. And this is going to be a major reason why their idle quality isn't as smooth as a traditional flat plane as well. This large gap is going to be why you lose a lot of that bottom end efficiency as well. So these bikes don't really make a lot of power below five, 6,000 RPM, and they're not really efficient in that RPM range, you have to get a certain amount of engine speed to overcome this. And then once you get over 6,000 RPM or so, that's when this double bang event is really, really gonna shine. 
Two firing events, 90 degrees of each other, gives the spike insane mid-range torque. You can launch the spike around 8,000 RPM and it almost wheelies on you. Whereas the flat plane is still a little boggy at 8,000. You could bump these up to almost 10,000 RPM when you're launching them and they don't hit as hard as the cross plane. The cross plane just has tons of mid-end torque. The more RPM you give the cross plane, the smoother it is. You could almost compare it to a cammed V8 when they're really choppy and lopy down low. They don't like to idle super smooth, but the more RPM you give a cammed V8, the smoother it gets and the more power it makes. This is also part of the reason why the cross plane gets horrible fuel mileage. It's just not as efficient as the traditional flat plane crank. This very unique firing order is also why the cross plane weighs more because it takes more counterweight to balance this style of crank. So hopefully that video kind of opened your eyes and gave you a little more insight as to the characteristics of a cross plane and actually understanding how and why this bike operates like it does. I thought it was pretty cool when you broke it down and actually understood the mechanics behind everything. And that's what makes this bike so unique. At the end of the day, I love it. The longer I own this bike, the more I just fall in love with all the little quirks it has. I'm, at first I was kind of disappointed with the low end grunt. Like it doesn't really have any power at all before 4,000 RPM, whereas my flat plane lugged a lot better. But at the end of the day, you just ride the bike for what it is. You give it a little bit of extra RPM, it's happy, you're happy, and it's just a totally different experience. If you guys are thinking about getting a cross plane, they are worth the hype. If you've never rode a cross plane before and you get the chance, definitely try one. They're just a completely different animal. But that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you guys learned something and have a little bit better understanding on why the cross plane is the beast that it is. Like always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.